Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it it if you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Andrew Orozco. And this is Collateral Gaming with... GeekNewsNow.net Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it. And welcome to the show, Andrew. This is your first time guesting, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ashley. Thanks. Uh, it's an honor to be invited on. Thanks you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, so actually, I was contacted through an associate of yours, uh, David. Mm-hmm. He yeah. contacted me asking, you know, about a spot on the show, and then he said he would reach out to somebody from his crew, and that's how mm-hmm. we met. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, there we go, just networking and all that in this age. Hey, uh, I'm a fan of it. I mean, with Collateral Gaming, I mean, we haven't had too many guests. With Collateral Cinema, we have our movie podcast. But Collateral Gaming, we're just sort of starting to branch out and uh, reach out. And, and hey, if you're somebody that's listening and you'd love to link up with us, if you're a podcaster, gamer, or whatever else, hit me up. But uh, today we're here to talk about the brand new Fire Emblem Engage. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. And uh, I've actually been highly anticipating this game. Uh, before we get into that, though, Andrew, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your podcast, and anything else you do? Uh, sure. Yeah. So I volunteer write for geeknewsnow.net. It's a uh, it's a news media website where we just talk about mostly like Star Wars and Star Trek, but also I I do mostly video game writing. I mostly write about video games, a little bit of Marvel, there's DC stuff in there, just general geekdom in general. And then I also have a podcast of my own that's not affiliated with Geek News Now uh, called Duo Sense. It's a it's a play on terms because there's usually two of us and. The dual sense controller for right. PS5. So, so we uh, every week uh, we talk about the latest in video game news, what we've been playing. Uh, we'll do like little fun things there, like uh, twenty questions, like video game version of that. Uh, we do a fun thing sometimes where we'll randomly uh, sort through a random number generator, uh, combine a theme with a type of game, and pitch it as like some kind of game and stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's those are the two main things I do. So there you go. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Actually, that sounds great. Everything you mentioned is something that I'm into. You mentioned Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, DC. I'm into all of that geek shit. So uh, that sounds <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a good time. It's fun. It's fun being part of the group. Yeah. Nice, nice. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get into this Fire Emblem game. So let me ask you, Andrew, are you familiar with the Fire Emblem series? Like, have you played any of the previous games, or where are you at with this franchise? So actually, no, this is the first one I've ever played, uh, which is really funny because I consider myself a huge fan of like strategy RPGs and like tactics games. So like Final Fantasy Tactics, XCOM, D- Disguise, I love the Disguise series, uh, all sorts of, you know, strategy art, moving units around the map. So I've never played Fire Emblem. I've never, I don't know if it was mm, just the setting or something just never grabbed my interest. Like I'm familiar with some of the characters through Smash Brothers, like Marth and Krom and right. all of them. But no, this is my first Fire Emblem game where I was like, like, okay, like, I'm ready to jump in now to be like part of like the zeitgeist for once. So, all right, all right, that's actually really interesting, man. I, I would, I kind of want to hear, like, how this comes across as a as a first Fire Emblem game, and I'm excited to get into it. As for myself, I've actually only recently been introduced into the series. I love the tactical Ooh, RPG yeah. genre. I think it's a lot of fun. But mm-hmm. uh, actually, as a result of doing this podcast. We started. I started getting into the Fire Emblem games. I think last season, yeah, our season finale, we did the Blazing Blade, which was the 2003 game that came out on the Game Boy Advance. 
when it came to the states originally, it was just title Fire Emblem because it was the first one in the West. Mm-hmm. And I uh, kind of fell in love with the series. I started playing that one, and I started playing a whole bunch of other Fire Emblem games, uh, including the last game, which was Three Houses. So I'm definitely going to be drawing a lot on that, you know, comparing this to the previous entry, because the previous entry was really, really good. Um, yeah, and I know it's, like, one of the most, like, highly, like, rated Switch exclusives. Like, I have... I have a few friends here and there who tell me, like, you got to play three houses, got to play three houses. And then they tell me you have to play the game three separate times, and I'm just like, oh. (laughs) I'll be honest, I've only played through, like, one route. So, technically, there are four different routes that you can go through. There's three factions, but there's there's another pathway. There's the decision you can make in one of them, but I've only played through one route, so that's all I have to go off of. And I was still blown away by the world, the characters, the story writing. I I was really impressed by three houses. I liked the Warriors spinoff, Three Hopes, as well. I thought that was oh, a lot okay. of fun. Um, wasn't didn't get too huge into the first Fire Emblem Warriors game, but you know I, I like the Warrior slash Musa style as well, uh, and I thought that last one was a good blend of like tactical RPG meets uh, Warriors. Obviously, this isn't the, this this isn't one of those types of games, right? This is straight up tactical RPG. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think. Well, well let, let's start off with you. Okay, so what are your overall thoughts on? Fire Emblem Engage, just off the bat. Uh, the combat's pretty unforgiving, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm playing it on playing it on casual, just because I I no, I don't I don't do permadeath like in XCOM or anything. Like if I have to do permadeath, I know I'm just going to be resetting the whole time, and that's just like that's just a pain in the ass to have to deal with. So I just like just play it on casual. I put it on normal, which I think is actually a little too easy at yeah. times. At times it's really easy, and then other times it's like, oh, like difficulty spike out of nowhere. Um, but I mean, I enjoy the gameplay. I like the whole like rock paper scissors thing with the axes and the spears and the swords, mm-hmm. and like the magic and like arrow or bows and arrows and such. Um, I ha- I for the most part enjoy. It. I think the story up until chapter eleven is kind of weak mm-hmm. and then once you get to chapter 11 like oh like oh like this is like the interesting act of the story now so um but i'm so far like i'm kind of i'm enjoy i'm along for the ride let's just say that awesome awesome so yeah i am i'm gonna echo a lot of what you said i felt coming into this from three houses which was like a war opera had a really compelling story with uh, multiple different routes and and ambiguous morally gray decisions, very three dimensional characters. The story and the characters from I think you said like kind of in like the first few chapters are very underwhelming. I I, I do agree with that, and I think that's something that we're hearing a lot is that the story is pretty underwhelming. Um, we're not going to get into spoilers, so <laughs> fortunately that means we're mostly going to get to talk about the gameplay anyway, which is the good part. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was a little disappointed. I actually just beat Chapter 11 uh, today, actually. I was, oh, uh, okay. yeah. So uh, I, I had some time, you know. I actually, I got off work a little bit early. And so I was I was just trying to cram as much as I could. <laughs> That's perfect, because we're, like, right around the same area then. That's good. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, yeah, yeah. And I actually agree with you. I think the story's kind of actually picking up now, which is good. And, and I'm really excited. And I've heard that like the later chapters of this, of this game, it actually does kind of, it does kind of come to a head. But uh, yeah, wh- right off the bat, there are no different routes to go through. There aren't really any decisions. It's a linear path from beginning to end, or at least from what it is so far and from what I understand. So this is going to be more of your typical Fire Emblem uh, story experience. And, and I mean, I don't always expect a great story out of a Fire Emblem game. That's not always what you what you go to. That's Fire not Emblem. what they're known for. Okay. Well, it's a it's it, Fire Emblem's very hit or miss, from what I hear, you know. And and I've only played, I, I've played through, I've played most of the games, but I've only played all the way through a couple of them. That being the Blazing Blade, and Three Houses. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you don't really go to Fire Emblem for story, but then you have games like Three Houses where the story is just so good. So. You know, and then that in that aspect, you know, I did feel it was a little underwhelming. I I know like there's a very early character death in like the first couple chapters, and I just couldn't bring myself to care about it. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, is it one of the twins? No, 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 no. Early care, oh. like like in the first like couple chapters, right? 
Mm, I'm thinking, I forget his name. Is it uh, the dude with the horse and the lance? No, 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 no. I mean, like a character that dies in the story. Oh, yeah, that felt unearned. Yeah, the whole kind right. of like, okay, like, are, like, am I supposed to be feeling something here? Like, we just met this character. Like, yes, exactly. So we, yeah, it was, it was really odd. It was kind of just like, like, okay, like, we're doing way too much grieving for this character that basically just served as like the tutorial. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I felt exactly the same way. Yeah. I was like, okay, like, yeah, I just, I don't really give a damn. Let me get, let, let's move on, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and we have a very tropey plot, you know, at least to begin with. We have. Very, um, very much so. Very much so. Like, it, it's, it's just, JR, it's like a JRPG checklist. Like, you know, <laughs> amniasic, amniasic main character. Uh, I, I don't want to say too much more, I guess, because of spoilers. But I mean, that's like in the first five minutes. I don't really think it's a spoiler, but no, like it's just you know the you know prophesized hero and then wakes up after a thing. thousand years. Hmm, what fantasy game recently did that on the Switch? <laughs> <laughs> right, wild. right. Um, but just the whole. Um, I think I messaged you about this. Just like the dialogue is so like. I don't want to say cringe because I hate that word, but it's very earnest, right? It's very much, it's very sincere. And it's like asking you to believe in the dialogue. And it's just kind of like, like this isn't landing or hitting the way it should be. It's like people, it's a lot of these characters just kind of stumbling over what they're saying. Like, oh, like my apologies, Divine Dragon. And it's just like all this hero <laughs> worship stuff. And it's just very kind of like, oh, it's it, like. It, it's every single character simping for the main character. <laughs> yeah. it's And even the, even the main character feels uncomfortable with the amount. Like he even like shows kind of like his discomfort with a lot of like the, a lot of just like the adoration. He's kind of just like, like, like that, that's. Kind of reminds me of Black Panther with like, like we, we don't do that here. Like it kind of reminds me of that's how I felt. Like it just seems very weird. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Like it, it there's definitely a lot of like hero worship going on. I don't know. Kind of feels like an isekai at points. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I can see that. But um I will say, well, some of the dialogue is a little a little cringy. I'll, I'll give it that. Um or I guess the, the the writing of it is I think the performances are honestly great. Especially uh I played as female earlier and I thought the oh, performance okay. of, of the main character as as a female was actually fantastic. I chose the male one, but yeah, I, I think the this is the sound of the game is very clean. It's very clear. I it's very crisp. I, I do enjoy it. The voice acting does come through it's not like half-assed or anything at all. Like it's very like like I said, very earnest. Like they like put so much feel in what they're saying. And it's like sometimes they're doing like 110%, like 10% too much. But yeah, I, I agree with you. The voice acting is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and it's basically what you might come to expect out of like a dubbed anime. But um, I, I think at least like the, the performance wise, maybe even a tier higher than that. Or think of like the best like dubbed anime, like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or, uh, you know, something of that nature. Uh, Death Note, something that that's actually done pretty well, and, and that's kind of what you got here. Uh, and actually, I'm really thankful that the protagonist isn't a silent protagonist this time. The protagonist actually has emotions, feelings. You know, that's actually great. And like, we have these support conversations where characters aren't just talking to themselves. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like those interactions. I love when, like, I get excited whenever I see like, oh, we just did like a team attack or like a chain attack or like something where you end next to someone. And then you'll see like little notification letting you know like they now have a conversation too like later on. I'm like, oh cool. Like, okay, let me see what they're gonna say. Cause I'll, some of them are like fun interactions. I especially like the ones that are not with the main character, where it's like another side character and another party member, and they mm -hmm. kind of just kind of flesh out a little bit more of the world. But I do find it funny that they give you the option to like name your character, and they do that thing where like they'll say your title but not your name because you know they don't the voice acting is doesn't know your name but it just kind of it just seems kind of silly to have like you know divine drag and like it ends there but then you see your name in the text and everything it's just like, like I okay I, I get it yeah in three houses they got around to around it by like just constantly calling you our teacher and and, and whatnot so and in this game i guess they kind of get around it by saying the divine dragon but like you said they they a lot of times they'll say the divine dragon and then the name and then... omit the name oh there's some games that do it pretty well where they at least give you the option of like choosing from a list of titles or a, a list of pre-name maids so you pre-made sorry i got that wrong pre-made names so you, <laughs> you at least get something out of it yeah yeah and you know what i was kind of expecting that if you picked the default name Alir, they would actually pronounce it but yeah. i watched some playthroughs and they don't 
That's why I loved it the same. I thought like, okay, maybe they'll say the name. If like, oh no, does it matter? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I, I named my character Sakura. It, it's just kind of a go-to name I use for female characters in video games because I uh, my daughter's middle name is Sakura. Oh, um, that's cute. It's actually a, a, a narrative it's a reference. Cherry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it's just kind of a go-to. Either that, or I'll go with like Scruffia, which is a variant a, a variant of my own like nickname, which is Scruffy. Uh, and so I kind of alternate. I alternate with Fire Emblem <laughs> games. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of kicked me in the ass though when I played Fire Emblem Heroes. There actually is a character pulled in from one of the games called Sakura. So oh. it, it kind of, it kind of, it yeah, it kind of kicked. That, me has, that has never happened to me. I've seen like screenshots where people like they do the thing where they choose a name of a character who's already in the game and they get confused or something. That's never happened to me, but I could just imagine like that. Yeah, that can be like that could be a little off putting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let's get into the gameplay here, okay? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you talked about it a little bit about uh, you know how, how you're enjoying the gameplay um, as compared to other tactical RPGs that you've played. What do you like that this one does differently? Mm, I guess I like the variety of units. How you have like you have like mounted units. You have your horses. You have like these like Pegasi, Pegasus, like flying uh, creatures. You do have a nice variety of. I like how you can choose which weapon you use when you attack because they have like different properties. That's something I don't think I've ever seen in like RPG where you can like be about to attack and it's like, oh, here's like the four or five different weapons you can use and like they each have like different like properties you can like switch in and out. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And, and that's a staple of Fire Emblem games, actually. I mean, a lot of the same items even appear. I mean, you'll have like your armor slayers and your hammers and whatnot, which are going to be good against certain types of units. You'll have weapons that are good against flying or armored. You know, it kind of kind of give you an edge in battle beyond the weapon triangle, which is nice. Um, yeah, it, I gotta say, what I appreciate about this Fire Emblem game, and what I think what makes this one refreshing over past Fire Emblem games, uh, was the introduction of the emblem or uh, system or the engage system. I actually thought that that really made battles a lot more interesting and added a lot more variety. You know, because you you have everything that a modern fire emblem or tactical rpg needs and then you've also got this this gimmick in the game that i, I think actually pays off and works yeah I, you're right i do actually do i it does add another edge because sometimes you're like like should i use it now like you're like should i use the envelope should i do the engage thing like right now or wait till i'm closer to the enemy wait till i really need to save it and like i find that some battles are long enough where i can do it more than once like if yeah. i do it right of right from the bat then like when i really need it i'll, I'll be fine I, I'll, I'll probably have it regenerated like by then so i can use it again i do like the different varieties of, like how depending on who you have it matched with like the special is different like i think the one i really like that seems really broken to me is um i think the character the emblem is cecilia i don't remember cecilia or celica yeah. I forget, it, be, it begins with a c but she does this uh i think the move's called warp ragnarok Yep. Where like if you use it, you you can like teleport within a massive distance and attack like in the same like motion, and that thing is like I use it to get past like the doors you have to destroy and like other stuff like that, and it's like it can make battles over like very quickly. Uh, at the same time, it's like attached like it, I have it attached with um, I forgot her name. But she's like the sister. She's the blonde unit oh, who's Saline. a sister. Yes, there you go. That's right, say Yeah, and she's kind of like like she's like a glass cannon like she like dies really quickly if you leave her on her on her own so like it's kind of a hit or miss but like i mean for the most part i, I sometimes i use the uh uh sigurd i think that's right the lance unit uh -huh. he has the the like driving thing too or like when you're done with the move like you're like a couple spaces away yeah yeah the, the, i think, like, I think they is. call it override or something where yes, you, you yeah, can go override. through like two units or like, it's it's really cool. I literally like that. Yeah, I got to agree. Um, I do really like Celica's uh em emblem moves, and I I also paired her with Saline because that's actually the natural pairing. I mean, most of the emblem rings I think they pair with certain characters during the story, and it's like okay, here's a good character that can use it, and usually they're kind of the same type. Like they pair Sigurd with the other cavalry units, Alf mm -hmm. uh, Alfred. They pair Celica with a, another unit that can use both sword and magic, which is nice. Uh, right. Although, interestingly enough, they pair the uh, the the stave the staff character or, or stave character uh, with uh, the thief in the game, which I thought was interesting. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you, Hiya, Unaka, Papaya. Unaka. 
<laughs> oh god yeah yunaka i think which i actually really like yunaka she's she has like this kind of mischievous wily like kind of persona about her like she's she's like the way you meet her and then well again no spoilers but the way you meet her and like how you kind of turn like you know recruiter and everything i actually like that section and she she's she's like the quirky kind of you know out there character so oh, i, I like love her. her she may be one of my favorite characters in the game i love yunaka she is awesome and <laughs> like like i honestly considered like i'm kind of stuck between romancing her her or romancing uh chloe they are chloe I guess. oh chloe yes chloe is my go-to er, no, no matter the skirmish i always have chloe like she's just so versatile with like every single like situation like the throwing the lance and like going over like ground like you know to go where other units can't go like she and i don't know if maybe it's just the way i have her set her up but like it is really hard for enemies to land hits on her like she do- just dodges everything i'm just yeah. like i don't know what the setup is or something but she just like they cannot land a hit on her for some reason it's kind of a trend with pegasus knights in fire emblem or or, or flyers is that they, they tend tend to have a high uh, avoid stat so they can they can they can Ooh, quickly okay. dodge uh, and that's kind of their go-to and, and it helps because <laughs> they're weak against arrows so you know you, you really want to uh yeah you really want to have that that nice avoid mechanic uh, also the main character alir also uh has has kind of has a high avoid which is common with fire emblem protagonists i would yeah. say yeah uh yeah but yeah no i i really enjoyed the emblem mechanic i enjoyed being able to engage with the uh previous lords of fire emblem games because if you're not aware every emblem in the game is a main protagonist of a previous i, rec- I recognize a lot of them from smash that's, that's right. how i remember like roy Marth, and roy Marth, yeah. yeah yeah lucina um yeah yeah they're all characters and so i've played most of them but it's kind of giving me an opportunity to uh to get acquainted with with other characters I think it's really funny that Nintendo's releasing this game with characters from Fire Emblem games that aren't even available in the West and they won't make them available. <laughs> so it's like, hey, do you want to... Here's this character, Sigurd, from this uh, Fire Emblem game. Oh, well, can I can I play the actual game? No. Can I pirate it? <laughs> no, you're not allowed to. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Every time I think of this conversation, I think of how I had to download the, the English patched ROM for uh, Earthbound... Uh, uh, well, Mother Three, basically. Mother but, Three, yeah. Yeah, like I have, I have, I have it on my little emulator, and I just think of like, I mean, we even have Reggie Fizeme like directly reference Mother Three like a couple times, and it's just like, like, oh, now you guys are just now you're just teasing us, man. Like, just just put it out, <laughs> just put it out, put it on Virtual Console if anything. Please, yeah, no, it's especially Reggie of all people saying that 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 that's kind of a that's kind of a dick punch, man. I I, I agree, but. <laughs> I, I think that we're going to get a Fire Emblem 4 slash 5 remake pretty soon. In fact, what I would do is I'd package them together because the way that Fire Emblem 4 make works, Genealogy of the Holy War, is that it's divided into two to two parts. I've never played it, but from what I understand, mm. it's divided. And so there's a there's a first generation and then there's a second generation that are all children. And based on which characters you pair together, the children inherit like different characteristics. Mm, okay, that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, it sounds actually really cool. I'd love to check wasn't, it out. Wasn't there like a Fire Emblem game that came out like a while back? It's like a 2D one, but it was like one that was Japan only before. It was like Dark something. Uh, I know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, Shadow like Dragon. The, that, that was the very the first one. Fire Emblem game. Yeah, and they there you go. They remade it on the DS. I have played a little bit of that one. But um, yeah, the thing with four, Fire Emblem 4 and 5, which is cool, is that 5 actually takes place between both generations and 4. So it... I, I feel like if they're going to remake those two, they should just go ahead and remake them together and throw them into one game. Okay. And I, like, I, I yeah, they, they've done that with like, um, I'm trying to think they did that with, are they going to do that soon? Not Nintendo, but they're doing that with Suikoden in one and two, where they're remaking those together or remastering both of those together. Uh, they're doing that with advanced wars one and two, if that ever does come out, right. who knows, but like the pair, the double, the pairing thing that, yeah. I feel like it, that would be that would be natural because well, in Fire Emblem Four and Five are next because we did we like we you mentioned before we got Shadow Dragon which is a remake of Fire Emblem One, we got Echoes Shadows of Valentia which is a remake of Fire Emblem Two, Fire Emblem Gaiden, mm. uh, and I actually really like that one. That one's on the 3DS and it's a lot of fun. Um, and then there was a remake of Fire Emblem Three, but it's Japan exclusive, so both the original game and the remake are Japan exclusive. So uh, yeah, thanks Nintendo and Intelligent Systems for that. 
But yeah, I, I really hope that we get a Fire Emblem 4 and 5, and I hope we get a, fi- a 6 and 7 soon remake, because uh, I, I really like 7. 7's a lot of fun. <laughs> where, where exactly does Engage fall? I, I, are they related at all or no? No. So every Fire Emblem game actually kind of takes place in its own separate universe. Some it's like Final them, Fantasy then. Yeah, it's just like Final Fantasy. Some of them are direct sequels, right? Fire Emblem 4 and 5 are. Uh, 6 and 7 are. Right? That, that's, that's, that's why those ones work together. I believe, yeah, 1 and 3 and uh, Awakening actually all take place in the same universe. Um, and, and apparently they all take place within like the same multiverse and they reference each other because we see that here in Engage. Yeah. And, uh, the mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes does the same thing. So, But yeah, for the most part, they're completely disconnected. It's, it's, the, sa- it's the same as Final Fantasy. That's a great example is that like, they're all separate. Um, okay. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, Engage, I think, uh, I, I'm actually really, really impressed by just the gameplay. I think the gameplay is really solid. It's everything that you would come to expect from a Fire Emblem, like a modern Fire Emblem game. Uh, it feels smooth and fluid. The Engage mechanic keeps things fresh. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm enjoying, like, you know, just kind of pairing all these characters together and seeing what their support conversations were, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. It's very smooth. The game is very it runs very it runs incredibly well on the Switch, which is a nice like it's refreshing considering the whole like Violet and Scarlet debacle like about a month ago, <laughs> where it's like oh the Switch art outdated hardware out, and that's like no it, th- those games are just poorly optimized because clearly here like it runs s- s- buttery smooth and I like the because I seen like older Fire Emblem games where like you go you move a unit you attack and then it has to transition to like a separate screen. And then, like, the attack plays out, then you transition back. Like, here it's, like, all done quickly. Like, you, it zooms in, you do the attack, zoom back out, and, like, we're off to the next, like, movement kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, even, like, the battle, because, yeah, it, it's really smooth. I really, really enjoy that. Um, I even like the way that they kind of, like, may have, have the characters move about the map. Uh, in previous Fire Emblem games, you kind of just, you know, kind of selected each, squ- you know, the square that you want the character to move, and then they move. Here, you actually kind of directly control the character on the grid, and it looks really nice. Oh, wait, are you talking about, like, after the battle's done, and you're, like, free to explore, the, like, the area, like, the town or whatever? Or No, not just that, but I mean, like, whenever, oh. you, whenever you're actually moving your character between each square, they actually move in real time, right? And then you can... Oh, it's not, like, stiff, like... It's not like... Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, not like just like select the square and then the character moves like in previous games. I And I think you can turn... You can toggle that setting so you can have it work like previous games where you can kind of have that like move in real time, which is cool. Uh, Three Houses had a thing where you could actually zoom all the way in and, and, and the characters actually could move around with like their entire like battalions mm. in real time, which was cool. But yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think that the like the moving in and out of combat is really fast and fluid and you can even skip it, but you really don't need to because, I mean, the combat's just so much fun. And, and as usual, I mean, watching, like, these crit animations whenever you get a crit is really nice. Um, oh, I, I love whenever you have an axe unit. I, I, I think it's the old the old dude with, like, the white hair, Van, Van Vander. Vander. I think, or, it does a thing where he drags the axe along the ground. Yeah. to like kind of like charge it up that's like one of my favorite things like they do when you, when you see that go, when you see the like this axe swing down to the ground like oh we're about to get a crit right now like yes yes <laughs> yeah the crits look so cool like i could watch fire emblem crit compilations all day and there was something really special about like the 2d entries like the gba fire emblem games with the crits that felt for a while was kind of <laughs> lost with the 3d games and then they actually kind of brought it back and it's really nice. It, it does feel a little corny how like every single time the character feels like they need to say their little one liner, but you just kind of come to expect it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it's a little annoying, but I think it's also it's it's better than silence sometimes. So, yeah. And you're kind of getting like, it is. like a, a handle of like each character's personality. I, I, and again, I don't think the characters are are terribly well fleshed out. A lot of them are very like one note. Like, okay, this is their characteristic. That's that's what they are. They're, 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 yeah, they're, they embody you know or personify this particular trait. But um, I think it's still a lot of fun, kind of just having them all together. And I, I like that this game kind of went for that more um, charming, like like lighter uh, anime esque feel. You know. I do. I like um, just to touch on it real quick um, because their interactions do. I think I noticed do come up later on. Is like, uh, for example, there's an interaction between Alfred and one of his like uh, assistants, the dude, the really buff guy, the really buff guy with like the small head for some reason. He's like, oh, he's like a really buff guy. I think his name's like I forget his name. Sharon but he's the or something. 
he's like the axe unit, yeah. And there's like a little interaction where Alfred's kind of just like groping him, like he's jealous of how strong. <laughs> <laughs> like you know kind of like a, one of those like like thor mcu moments where he's just like in awe of, of like this unit absolute all right and then when the next time using um i forget his name the axe the axe guy like he levels up and he makes a comment about like oh i'm sorry alfred like oh like like he's like, i'm getting stronger like oh i'm sorry Alfred, because he's like he's like leaving him behind physically so i thought that was that's kind of like a little funny like a little like nod to like the conversation that earlier where he apologizes for getting stronger for like being stronger than Alfred. So I think there's like little moments here and there, like when they level up or like if they're knocked out of the match, they'll have like a little quit before they leave or something. Yeah. And I kind of, I, I, it, it's not like the most original thing, but I think it does kind of help separate them from each other a little bit more. Yes. Yes. I agree. Please. I beg of you gather together all 12 rings. When your scattered memories return to you, you must fight on with the utmost divinity. I believe in you, my child. I understand. I'll collect the rings. I swear to you. And I'll fight. I'll do whatever you want. Help me. Lend me your strength in this fight. I am known as Marth. Emblem Marth, to be clear. It is good to see you. I was able to answer your call because you remembered me. But then, a dark presence emerged. Sombron. Marth, what was I like? Well, you were kind, as you are now. There's no need to remember everything at once. Divine One, will you help us? Please, come with me to Firinae. The alliance with Brodia took some doing. Their king's an ambitious man. Brodia, the kingdom of might. I greet you as the crown prince of Brodia. Solm is an open-minded country. They've always had good relations with Firinae. I hope you're hungry for fun, because that's what's on the menu first! Lucky me mad, huh? <laughs> I take it Illusia isn't in the alliance. We know it's snowy there with long winters, and that some Illusions worship the Fell Dragon. Come a little closer. I'll give you a good long look. I will now take your lives, your souls, and the rings. He is not yet at full strength. My kingdom has another emblem ring in its possession. Well, isn't this tragic? By virtue of your science, we will now kill every living soul in this castle one by one. I detest violence, but I will always fight to defend the innocent. I'm just passing through. Well, looking for someone, really. Still, despite everything we're facing, I'm calm. I think it's because you're here, Mark. We are not going anywhere. We will remain by your side until the end of this journey. You silly divine dragon. Did you think emblems were just a you thing? Not by a long shot. <laughs> Marth? Marth, speak to me, please! Everyone you care about. They are all dead. I also like the decision in, in fitting with the lighter tone of this game to make more vibrant colors. Uh, it's really actually kind of a contrast to Three Houses once again because that game kind of had a more kind of a little, a little bit of a darker feel and uh, the characters didn't have as as much of a a soft edge. They have like don't they have like colored like factions right like I, I I'm thinking of the cover of the game that's red blue and yellow like prominently. Yeah yeah I mean I mean there there are there are there are colors in there but yeah just overall the game wasn't nearly as vibrant as this time. In fact, looking up about this. Uh, evidently, uh, they actually wanted to go with a design style that appealed to a younger audience. 
uh, or mm. a broader audience, which included younger players. Uh, and uh, so they actually had some difficulty implementing that into 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 the game. Uh, let's see the uh, illustrator that like, they use. Go ahead. Just full disclosure, I do not like Alir's hair and eye combination. I I really do not like it. It just it reminds me of a mix icy. If you're at a mix icy with like it has like the red and the blue straw, like blue raspberry, red, whatever cherry. Like it's just it reminds me of the icy colors, and I'm like, I don't get it. I I don't. I, I someone told me that there is like a story reason, or that's like a very it's a very like intention choice. But I, it just looks so jarring, and like I, someone told me because it has to do with like the Joy Cons, like the Switch, the red blue Joy Cons, or something <laughs> like that. But I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. If there's a story reason, but it just looks. Like, like they took like the anime factor to an eleven. Like, just don't make it make sense. Just, just whatever color. All right, yeah, yeah. Let's address that because <laughs> I agree. The main characters' uh, character design is atrocious. I like the other characters just fine, but the main characters, yeah. ah, the red, the blue, the heterochromia. They look literally like a fan fiction character. They look like an OC, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They look like somebody's OC. Yeah. That that that's yeah. exactly what they look like. It's bad. I don't know what they were going for. I know a lot of people weren't filled with confidence about this game whenever that was that was revealed. And <laughs> I read that the original color choice actually was going to be black and white, with like black hair, white hair, and a black eye and a white eye. I think I think the red and blue, at least for the eyes, I think was a better choice here because I think a black and a white eye would just look odd. Yeah. But I I think they I I don't know. It's just it just feels like look at me. You know what I mean? Just I don't yeah know. yeah. It's very, very vibrant, uh, sometimes uncomfortably so when it comes to the main character. But I think when it comes to like the rest of the game, I'm actually kind of enjoying the, um, the, 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 the difference, you know, kind of the juxtaposition, especially with the last game, with this more vibrant popping style. Uh, and evidently, they decided to go with a, uh, an illustrator in Japan named Mika Picasso who worked on various genres of artwork, including character design logo and merchandise design for apparel brands, cover art for novels, and CD album colors. But evidently, they actually had difficulty and almost decided to go with uh, 2D art for dialogues uh, because they Mm. were having a really difficult time implementing that in the game. That's weird. I mean, everything looks pretty smooth in terms of... I wonder if it was just like a man hours situation or because everything looks smooth. I mean, outside of the garish colors, like it looks phenomenal. I'm surprised actually that the switch can do like such vibrant colors this way or like even just the whole, I don't know if it's the engine or whatever it is. It's just an ideal optimized experience. Yeah, no, it actually works. It works really well. Again, like you said, I think this is one of the titles that kind of shows off the switch's power and and runs Mm. really, really well. I mean, the loading screens are a little, are a little long. Sometimes, especially whenever you're like in the Somnial and you're like moving to the arena room or you're moving to the ring room and you're like, and it really, those are those. I feel like those like switch, like the switching back and forth that actually feels kind of fast. It's like never more than two seconds, I think, at least for me. Maybe I'm just impatient because like Uh, most of the game is like really, really fast. But then there's like a couple loading scenes and it's like if you're like me, you feel like you have to go back to the Somnial between every single battle and it starts. Yes, to I do. Kind of, okay. It becomes so I can use a- the arena. So I can use the arena every single time. Oh yeah. Okay. So there's something that really annoys me. I don't know if you're going to get to this, uh-huh. but if you don't, apparently the game treats it. So if you don't use certain units after a while, they just drastically fall behind the rest of your, of your crew. And if you, even if you do skirmishes, for some reason, those skirmishes are at a higher level than like what the story levels are sometimes. So if you have like, like I haven't used the twins from the beginning of the game since like chapter three, because they just like just dropped off in terms of like level and everything. And like they cannot hang anymore. So it's like usually what it is, it's like the same same units that I use are the only viable option for skirmishes. So and even using even using the arena, because that's what I try. I try to bring up the young, the like the weaker units because you're only limited to two to three attempts right. in between missions. And like some, they usually fail because they pit, pit them against other higher level than like uh, units. And I'm like, I don't know if past fire emblem games let you kind of grind or not. But here, like, if you try to grind, it, it almost seems punishing because you'll clear a skirmish and then the next skirmish pops up is an even higher level. And so I'm just kind of like, like I, I'm sorry, guys. Like, <laughs> if I didn't use you, like, you just you just fell behind everybody else, and like that's kind of it. 
kind of a thing with Fire Emblem games is you are going to have your your units that are going to kind of drop off and stop being useful. Uh, I, I like you. I stopped using the twins. I stopped using Vander as well because no, yeah, not because he's a bad unit, but because he's he's a he's an XP sponge. He, he's not viable. He's a pre promote. And in Fire Emblem games, pre promotes are great in the beginning of the game when you need a character to kind of car- carry the team or what they're really good for is weakening an enemy. So a weaker character can just kind of finish uh, okay. them off and get gain all that experience. But you don't want to let them finish off any enemies because there's there's they don't get really great growths and they're already yeah i was annoyed that he it took forever to level him up i think i leveled him up once and i was like why is it taking so long to level him up yeah and and like pre-promotes are are done that way on purpose your your characters that start off as base units that you promote into uh into stronger units end up being stronger characters in the end because of their stat growths but pre-promotes by design and it's a common fire emblem thing they they don't okay. have a really great stat growth. They're kind of just there to help carry your team in the early game, and then later on, you you naturally promote your units into like bosses, and you can kind of program your units the way that you want them to go. This game is like a little, the master seals things, right? Yeah, yeah, master seals. Yeah. This game is a little bit less flexible than um, Three Houses was. With Three Houses, basically any character could be any class. Granted, they had uh, they had the uh, Weapon proficiency. The weapon proficiency. And then this game's kind of the same way, but there are some more limitations. So it's kind of like a mix between traditional Fire Emblem games and some of the more modern games that kind of lets you go wherever. And yeah, you can reclass into any unit again, given you have the right weapon proficiencies, but you got to work for it a little bit more. And I actually kind of appreciated that. Um, Part of me wasn't sure whether to wait until level 20 to, to promote characters like in like your older style Fire Emblem games or to just promote them right away like you would in modern games? Well, I looked it up, and the answer is is that you actually can promote them as early as possible because... That's, that's what I've done so far. Like when it gives me the Astro Seal, I, I'm like, okay, who can I use this on like right away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should do it as soon as you can at level 10 because you don't have to worry about losing stat growth. There's a, there's a mechanic in this game where if a character reaches level 20, they can basically reclass and, Ooh, and okay. even into the same class using a second seal. So you you can actually, and, and their stats carry over. So you don't have to worry about stats dropping off. So there's no reason to wait to promote your characters, which is nice. Uh, Ooh, and in okay. older Fire Emblem games, the, the trick was, was that you had to wait. And sometimes there was kind of a balancing act. It was kind of like, well, maybe I don't have to wait until level 20, the max. Maybe let me just like promote this character at 15. Or some people just promote whenever the game gets too hard. And that, that was their rule of thumb. Is like, if I'm having too much of a time, then I'll go ahead and promote my character. But you had to wait. In this game, you don't have to. And I, I started off doing that way because I thought that, 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 that they were kind of going back to that. But the I was glad to hear that, no, there's no limit. You can continue to reclass a character over and over and over again once they reach level 20. So That's cool. That, it kind of reminds me of, like, uh, in the Disgaea games, you can do something similar where, like, your character reaches, like, a certain level and you can, like, reincarnate, which is, like, start back at level 1. But the next time you get to, like, level 100 or whatever, you'll be stronger than you were at the previous level 100. So it's, like, you're encouraged to like re like re reincarnate reincarnate to actually get to like your maximum like ability so oh, it sounds cool. kind of like that. That, that that sounds really cool yeah yeah no it is kind of like that like you can just keep going of course i haven't reached that level with any character where i actually have to to, to reclass them but um uh, using the second seal but i'm glad to know that you can and, and what's cool is that not all of the the uh you know personal skills come from leveling up or promoting anyway i mean a lot of the skills come just from using emblems and yeah, i thought that that yeah, inheriting skills from emblems. I thought that was really cool. In fact, you don't even actually have to to fight with them. I mean, it, it does encourage you to experiment and pair emblems because any character can be paired with any emblem ring, right? And it, it it does give you like you can kind of mix and match, and you can you can experiment, but you also don't have to. You can also just go into the arena and, and just the emblem. Yeah, level one to five, like in one instance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just spend your bond points and just kind of... And it's nice because you can give your characters useful skills that will work. Hey, I want this character to dodge more attacks or, you know, like mm-hmm. like you can kind of like just give these skills to characters and kind of build them the way that you want to. That's also that that's also the key, from what I hear, to to changing character classes into completely different classes that they weren't ne- aren't even necessarily on the path for, but you can gain weapon proficiencies through bond, your bonds with the with the emblems and that enables yeah. you to yeah yeah i thought that for was some of them cool. i think it's like the level three like ability is like the perf- weapon proficiency I, I think for some of them that's what it is 
Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, another new thing with this game was the unit types. In previous games, I mean, we had armored units, we had flying units, we had cavalry units. That was a thing. But now every single character has a type and has an additional ability in battle. Like, you have those backup units, which do those chain attacks. That's new. That mm-hmm. wasn't in previous games. You have, like, the, the chi characters that can use, like, the chain guard and take attacks oh, from okay. enemies. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really, really cool. What do you what do you think about do you like do you do any of the training? I like the little mini games, the little training mini games you do, like the little exercise where it's like the the little DDR esque kind yes. of like arrow thing, but also just like mashing the button to like do like the weights, whatever kind of like in GTA where like you gotta like you get stronger or whatever, like the little and then you like I mean they give you kind of insignificant boost unless you do like the really, really hard one. But I do like it because it kind of just breaks up the monotony a little bit for me. Yeah, and it was another part of like my like go to list, like my, my checklist every time I went back to the Somnia was like, All right, let me get that little stat boost. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed those little mini games. I think that the um the, the squats one was really easy. And I went to the squats first, I think because of Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just made me think of it. The squats one was really easy. It was kinda like more like, yeah, it's like DDR. Uh, uh, that brought that gave me the flashbacks of trying to do the t- the the pull ups with Tifa. I think it was Tifa trying to do like the pull ups or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think in uh, remake, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. I forgot there is squats in the original Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but yeah, no, I I thought that was cool. Um, the sit ups honestly gave me carpal tunnel just mashing that button so many times with my thumb around oh. afterward. The the push ups were actually the hardest for me, but they're they're all pretty easy. At least in like the normal difficulty, which is all, the only one that I played it on. They have a fishing mini game too, and then they have a wyvern riding mini game too. I haven't tried the wyvern one. I, I saw the fishing one, but I don't think I tried that one yet either. Yeah, it, it's not all, all that exciting, but it's there. So it's like, I feel like the the fishing mini game in any JRPG is again like another checklist thing. Where like we're gonna throw it in there because people expect it to be in there. Like there has to be a fishing mini game, right? <laughs> Does anybody really like these? <laughs> Apparently, because they keep doing them. Um, the Wyvern Riding one was pretty cool. I, I did that like one time. I, even, I think you unlock it after Chapter 11, and that, that was pretty fun. Oh, okay. That's, that explains why I haven't seen I, like I, I, I heard, I think someone else mentioned it. I'm like, I haven't seen that, but I saw the, yeah, I saw the fishing one, I think. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the fishing. So, yeah, and you just like every time I go back to the Somnial, I just kind of have like a, like a checklist. I'm like, okay, got to do a meal. Gotta uh, uh, do talk my to do, Gotta talk to people. Gotta do my my arena fights. Gotta do my all my mini games. Uh, if I have any bond points, spend them either through the arena or inheriting skills. You know, I just kind of have this like whole thing, and it's like so every single battle you go back and you, and you you do this whole thing, and and sometimes it felt a little bit monotonous, but I still felt like I had to do it. But I, break I, break down any excess weapons you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, go check out shops, see if there's any new items. Uh, buy every Master Seal, because you only get, like, a certain number per chapter um, that, that, that you can buy in stock. But I think I think towards the end of the game, I've heard that they actually give you kind of an, a limitless supply. So you, Ooh, can, you can prevent okay. all your characters, yeah. But, but yeah, I actually... And, and I think it kind of helps, you know, kind of flesh out the game. And, and I did like the whole, like, being able to explore each battle afterwards yeah talk to each of the characters i thought that was really cool because the maps in this game are actually really good yeah you can tell like when you're in like the, the you're in the middle of the battle and like you'll see like the layout of the map and it's like this looks like it doesn't look like generic generic it looks like like you have like you have your like you have like your little vineyard side over here then you have a couple like little huts and then you know you have a little gated area and then like when you are actually like on the ground like after the fight or whatever you can go around and like find items and like I mean, for the most part, it's kind of just like just like extra kind of tacked on, just like talk and then find items and then leave when you want to. But like, it, it's better than nothing. I think it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Uh, I I will say I think Three Houses did the whole like in between battles thing a little bit better because there was kind of this calendar and you could choose. Okay, now I want to explore the hub this 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 week. Now, okay, I'm not going to do that. Now I'm just going to go on extra skirmishes this week. Now I'm gonna go and do. Uh, and now I'm just. It sounds gonna, like Persona, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, now I'm just gonna do do extra lessons and kind of give my characters some extra experience or proficiencies in different areas. Um, there was just kind of this choice system, but it limited it you, you somewhat because you couldn't do skirmishes whenever you want to. And engage, you can. And I think the maps are better than Three Houses too. 
and and I, I mean I haven't played through houses so I can't like you can't comment but yeah I mean when you, when you start first start talking earlier about how like the characters and the story are better I'm like okay like that immediately is like oh maybe I should be playing that game instead <laughs> just because I recommend that from what I understand there's like more like political like ramifications and stuff going on in that game right yeah yeah it, it's very political in fact it, it's kind of hard to follow at times this game is it, it is a refreshing change of pace in that you can kind of just veg out and be like okay like I get the story. And, and like you said, I think like midway through the game, it does pick up quite a bit and become a little bit better. Um, there was uh, there was the king character, right? The the uh, I forget his name, but the, the, the father of the. Yeah, it starts with like D or something with a D or something. Yeah, of, I can't remember. Diamond and uh, the and Alcarist, I think were the Alcrest, son's yeah. names. I can't remember the name of the dad. I really liked him, actually. He was a character that I really enjoyed, but I was like, eh, I don't think he's going to last very long. I thought he was going to be more kind of, like, intimidating or, like, angry. Like, the way they play up, like, that kingdom, like, Bra- Brodia, right? Brodia, I think it is, or Brodia, yeah, one Brodia, of those. One of the, yeah. Brodia, which sounds kind of funny when I think about it. But, like, the way they play it up, like, oh, like, he's going to be, like, a real bastard. And he's like, no, like, this guy is just, he, looks, he just really likes fighting. That's his thing. He's so wholesome. <laughs> like, you can tell he loves his sons. But, like, I could just tell right away that he's not gonna last long Uh. (laughs) and that was just that was just my guess i'm not gonna tell you you know our audience whether or not that that happens or or what comes to play i just i I called it (laughs) (laughs) that's all i'm gonna say actually uh the other character that we mentioned earlier the early character death i actually was very suspicious i thought that there was something else going on so i think that that's part of why like i didn't I wasn't affected by the death because I just kept waiting for like a twist. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That kind of, well, the, the, like the heel turn kind of thing. I felt like I kind of saw coming just because of the nature of yeah. like these kind of games where, where it's like, like, doesn't matter if you did something for me. Like, I'm just going to do what I have to do on my ruthless road to like ambition or whatever. So right. like when we had that moment happen, I was like, yeah, it makes sense. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else that uh, you, you wanted to bring up or anything else that comes to mind about this game? Or do you want to get into our final thoughts? At times, you some of the units are just like way too weak. And that's like, like I'll have moments where I'm attacking a unit, I'll miss, and then they'll just counterattack. And even if I'm at full HP, it'll be like a one hit kill. And I'm just like, how did I die from that one attack? Like I get something like the, you know, the rock, paper, scissors thing, but like, Sometimes there's units where I'll put them on the edge of like the of like the area, and then like three units will come in and just body them completely like in one turn. And I'm at full health and I die like at the end. I'm like, oh man, like that. Like I don't know how people can play this game on classic where like you just have units dropping because I'll go into like a battle and easily you lose like three plus units by the end of the match. Okay, so yeah, actually my hot take on that your whole thing is that I feel like Fire Emblem is meant to be played in classic, and I cannot play casual. And I think it's because, Ooh. like, the first Fire Emblem game I played was one that didn't even have, like, a rewind mechanic. You just had to restart the battle. But you can also, because you're emulating it, you can just use save states. So, right. th- th- like, there's ways around it. And it, this game, like, to his credit, and like the past few Fire Emblem games, does have the rewind mechanic. And I yeah. think on normal, there's not even a limit on how many times you can rewind. I don't think there... I, I, someone else told me that I haven't tried... I've only used it probably once or twice per match when I've had to. But I, yeah, someone else said on normal, there is no limit. So... For me personally, I feel like permadeath is a part of Fire Emblem. I feel like you are supposed to play it that way. But that being said, you could you could just use the rewind mechanic and go back and prevent them from dying and just kind of re- redo it. And in fact, because the uh, because they just they, there's so many like, <coughs> liberal uses of the uh, of that rewind mechanic, I would use it just to like position my team better. I'd be like, oh, I should have left that character with a hand axe or a javelin so that they could they could counterattack against a. Uh, against a, a, a ranged attack so like i would just rewind just to just to put him in a better position but <laughs> so on classic can you like if you lose a unit do you just get replaced with a generic unit or can you like lock yourself out of completing the game because you lost so many units oh no the unit's gone yeah yeah they're gone and they don't get replaced you can't you don't, you're not really locking yourself out because i mean you can play through the game without a certain type of unit the only one I'm saying is it possible to lose everybody then? I guess so. I've never done it. I've always oh. reset. I've never I've never let myself lose a unit in a fire emblem oh, game. Okay. So. <laughs> That's my thing is like I'll I never let a unit die. Even if they're not a unit that I feel like I'll use, I just never let them die. That's like my that's like my thing. I was like, I cannot okay. let a single unit die because like they're 
I, I think part of the experience is that that they're a precious commodity, right? You'll never receive a unit like them. You'll never okay. receive that that particular unit with their same stat growths, with their same strengths and weaknesses, and and you know, and also the element of the story. In some games, they actually have some characters that can't die. Like I know, um, Blazing Blade is a prequel to Binding Blade, so like characters that are like that are able to die. Or the, sorry, characters that are in the, in the future in the future, yeah, can't die or or are children of, but like they just like created a time paradox. They they permanently <laughs> retire the unit so that you can't use them anymore, which you know still is gonna hurt you. But yeah, I feel like. For me personally, that's like part of the experience. But again, you can kind of cheaply get around it. So in today's day and age, I mean, especially if it's your first Fire Emblem game, I think that's why the classic is there. You know, mm. it's just to kind of ease players into it. But, um, but yeah, I I uh, I think that, that that's really all uh, I have to say w- without you know getting into spoiler territory. Anyway, I've just got in the habit of like where I can move a unit. Like if I'm not sure if they can survive, like I hit the next turn. I'll just put them like one before where they, they would be if like for the enemy to reach them. Yeah. So like it shows you like the area, like what they have, and I'll just put them like just one tile away from that, just in case. Well, yeah, and the game actually gives you a lot of, of information in, in advance. Like previous Fire Emblem games, like the original ones, weren't nearly so uh, liberal with the amount of information they give you in in the on the battle screen. You can have hmm. everything. You know exactly how this battle is going to turn out. They'll tell you which units can can attack. Not only can you toggle on to see the enemy areas, but they'll even have those little lines showing you which enemies can attack this character if you move it to yeah. that spot. And and they'll show you like exactly what will happen. Like how many turns. You know, disregarding of course misses and crits and things like that. I do like I do like that because not a lot of uh, strategy RPGs do that, but I do like how it tells you like how much damage you will do ahead of time, so yeah. you can be like, like should I use this powerful move or like let me see if I, mean, I can use a weaker, so I don't have to like waste my resource. Can I use like a weaker move and like oh I still can't, I'll still kill him? Okay, I'll use the weaker one or something. Yeah, yeah, and if you use the weaker one, those are nice because the the w- weapons that are weaker have a higher avoid stat or they may have a higher hit stat so they have a higher chance mm-hmm. of hitting so it's just kind of like picking the right weapon for the scenario they dropped yeah. weapon durability in this game and honestly like i i thought like if you had told me weapon durability was dropped i you, you would i would have thought i would have hated it but honestly i i i feel like this game manages its, its other mechanics well enough that not having weapon durability is just fine and, and to be fair, Echoes didn't have the weapon durability in it. Uh, Three Houses didn't have the weapon triangle, another thing that I feel like is a staple of Fire Emblem games. This game brought it back, so. <laughs> mm. I, I didn't know weapon durability was a thing. That I just think of, like, Breath of the Wild and how much people hate weapon durability in that. <laughs> I will defend that, actually, because Breath of the Wild offers you so many fucking weapons that, like, weapon durability is never an issue. Like, the... I Honestly, get it. It's to encourage you to try new other. Uh, yeah, I I know why it's there. I I just I don't know. I don't like because I played I played some other games that have weapon durability and it's just like usually it's just management isn't my strongest trait when it comes to like video games. Like having I love I mean I love RPGs. I love managing units and stuff like that. But managing like inventory and stuff like that, like Resident Evil style or whatever, like it's just like uh, that's like my least favorite thing in games. <laughs> I, I I I definitely feel like like the stress there. I mean, I I, I fucked up my Fire Emblem uh, Blazing Blade file, and I ended up having to start over the whole game because I just Aww. it was my first Fire Emblem game, and I just completely mismanaged my resources. I didn't uh, y- utilize my units well enough to to you know level up the right ones, and uh, like I, I had actually like already broken legendary weapons. Not knowing that, like, those legendary weapons had particular strengths or that, like, I would need to conserve them for the whole game. <laughs> so it's like, oh, yeah, here's a weapon that your character has that's, like, special and only they can wield it. But it's fucking broken. <laughs> oh, man. But are, you like, are you, like, one of those players that, like, you'll finish the game and have, like, all these items you never use because you're waiting to use them kind of thing? It depends. It depends on the game, honestly. But um, oh, okay. in that in that, that time, I didn't. I, I just I just used them. So uh, in this game, there is no weapon durability. That they did bring the weapon triangle back, which was nice. Um, and like I said, I don't think the, the the loss of weapon durability is actually a bad deal. I think that it it still encourages you to use different types of weapons to based on what's going to work best for the, the situation. situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, the the weapon triangle actually kind of is nice in this game. Three houses kind of had a weapon triangle, but only if you unlocked that skill. 
in this game, they even they brought it back, and they actually brought it back differently. In previous games, you would just kind of get a stat boost. Like, your character would be able to avoid attacks better. They'd get a slightly better strength. This game actually has that whole, like, breaking mechanic. Mm-hmm. Where enemies can't... Like, counter. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was really cool. And it also, you know, it kind of... Sometimes that, that pre-battle screen can, can be a little misleading. Because it'll tell you that it'll break, but it'll show that the enemy can counterattack and it'll show like, this is how much health you serve to, to lose, but you're not going to lose it because the enemy can't counter. So you kind of, you do have to think a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There's moments like where it'll show you like what the damage will be. And I'm thinking like, Oh, that's a lot of damage. And I'll go into the interaction. And I'm like, Oh, it, it's contingent on me getting countered and then countering the counter. That's how I get the full damage. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. There, there, that was a little misleading, but like, yeah, I got the damage. I got like the full damage in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I think uh, uh, Fire Emblem Engage has been a lot of fun so far. I'm looking forward to finishing the game whenever I have time. Um, any final thoughts for you, Andrew? Yeah, I want to finish it. I, I mean, now that the story is kind of doing something different, I mean, I'm intrigued to kind of get to the end. And then, like the game, I, I the game starts off with one of those like weird like flash forward kind of things where I'm like, I, like, I want to know how we get to that spot. How do we get to that point? I think, you know what I'm talking about too. Like when like certain characters are on your side and you're just like, yeah. like, wait, I haven't met that character yet. Like we see like the kind of like the beginning is the end or the end is the beginning kind of thing, whatever. So I'm like, okay, I want to see how we get to that point. So I, I'm excuse the pun. I'm engaged with the game. So <laughs> I, I want to see it to the end. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm really impressed by it. Like I said, I, like, like we mentioned earlier, I think, you know, the game does, does feel very well polished. It's very, um, it, it runs very well on the switch, uh, aside from a couple areas. I, I don't think the loading is very bad. I think, uh, I like that you can skirmish as much as you like, although the game does have other ways of discouraging grinding, like you mentioned. Yeah. But I, I kind of think it's a good balance and, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to finishing it. If I have time to, I mean, I have a bunch of other games to do on the podcast and there's always, there's always something, uh, we're actually behind. <laughs> we were supposed to do it takes two this month and we haven't done either oh, of, of game that. of the year winner 2021. It takes two. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually, I started playing like the first couple levels, but I haven't actually beat it yet. Um, but yeah, th- th- that's supposed to come out. <laughs> this, that was supposed to, we're supposed to have both parts out this month. And now I'm like, uh, I don't know how that's going to work. Cause you know, sometimes it's just hard to get to coordinate things with my co-hosts. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, but, I'm juggling a lot of games right now too. And I'm just kind of like, like what, like, right. Cause of, you know, we, we talked about how like, we'll do this like recording like a week after. So I'm like, okay, okay. I'm just going to focus on fire emblem. And then I got like distracted by some other stuff. I'm like, Oh, like I need to get back to fire emblem. So I'm like, Okay, like I don't know how many chapters are in the game, but like I feel like I'm probably halfway. I'm like at chapter 11, like 11, 12 ish. So I'm like, hopefully Ashley's around the same place. And then we said, oh, I'm just past chapter. I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I remember telling you, I was like, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I beat this game before we do it. <laughs> no, life, life got too busy for me to do that. But um, the game does run pretty fast. Like you can get through like a lot of it and kind of just, just keep going and keep going. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. But uh, thanks for being on, Andrew. Uh, where can our listeners find you? Uh, you can find us on all major podcast platforms. Again, that is uh, DuoSense, D-U-O-S-E-N-S-E. Um, yeah, we put out an episode pretty much every week at this point. So you can find us on there. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, it's been a blast talking with you. Uh, I'm glad I had somebody to do this episode with. I, I would have been solo if I didn't have you. <laughs> How would that have worked? I never, I never done like a solo podcast. Like, do you just like talk to yourself or just out loud? Or? I've had to do it a couple times, and it's it's difficult. It's difficult to just keep going, um, but <laughs> it can't be done. It's just not preferred. But yeah, you're welcome on any time. I think that we had a good good flow, good conversation. Thank you. I, I, yeah, I was, I, was, I was like, man, I was like, I hope, like, I hope I, I have enough to talk about. I'm like, I haven't finished the game. Hopefully, what I have can carry me through. And I think, I think for the most part, it did. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again. Thanks for having me on, actually. No problem. Yeah, and that's kind of the idea with these, uh, with these uh, game launch episodes. You know, it's just we're just kind of like spoiler free, talk about what we can. Um, but yeah, and guys, again, stay tuned for our it takes two episode. I should have that out whenever it gets done. And then uh, next month in February, what we have scheduled 
is uh, the Ace Attorney trilogy. And I'm really excited because I love Ooh. Ace Attorney. I, I I just another series I fell in love with. And I have I have the trilogy on Switch, but I've only finished the first one. Oh They're pretty good games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got you, you gotta you gotta keep going because um I mean two is two's got its highs and lows, three is phenomenal. Uh, and the original trilogy is like peak ace attorney in my opinion. So the other games are great, but like the original trilogy, that and uh, the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, highly, highly, highly recommend. Oh, that was like the newest one that came out, right? Last year, I think. Yeah, yeah, and they're actually kind of like a prequel set in like the Victorian era, and you're playing the ancestor of Phoenix Wright, and actually yeah. they're really good. It's like probably like the closest to the quality of the original trilogy is are those two games, and those those are also available on Switch. Uh, I'm probably gonna do those like maybe next season or something after we after having done the trilogy, but. Yeah, with um, the Ace Attorney trilogy, we're also going to be collaborating with Collateral Cinema because it's our uh, anniversary special. And with uh, Collateral Cinema, every year we do Takashi Miike movies. So it just so happens that Takashi Miike has done an Ace Attorney film. So oh, we are collaborating cool. on that. Oh, I think I've seen that. It's like a live action one, right? I have not seen it yet, but yeah, it is. It is a. Live I think I've seen movie. pictures of it. They, they do like Phoenix's hair, like the same way and everything. Yeah, it looks I interesting. I'm actually really looking forward to it because, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the series. Uh, speaking of Collateral Cinema, actually, uh, this month, and I, I think we're going to be recording this uh, just in a couple days here, so we'll have it out before the end of the month. But we are doing a uh, collaboration on the Silent Hill franchise. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's actually going to come out this month on the Collateral Cinema side. We are doing the the Silent Hill movie. On the collateral gaming side, our bonus round this month is going to be focused on uh, Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill Homecoming. So the duality of Silent Hill. <laughs> is, is the Homecoming like the worst, the bad one? or, or... Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty oh, much okay. like, yeah, I think people like universally call it the bad one. I haven't played it all the way through yet. So um, I've, I've never played a Silent Hill game. I, really? They just, yeah. They, I mean, like I, I like Resident Evil, but I think anything that has like a supernatural stuff, it just kind of freaks me out. Like, I, 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 I feel I'm a, I'm a very squeamish. I have a very weak stomach for stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Silent Hill kind of forces you to confront your own demons or something. So, <laughs> But yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing that. We're, so we have that coming out this month. Like I said, Ace Attorney next month. And uh, then we'll be getting into the rest of the season. I, I believe uh, some more, the next uh, game lunch review that we have scheduled. Well, it's kind of contingent. If I'm able to get a PS5 and secure one <laughs> and actually buy one soon, I would love to do Hogwarts Legacy when it comes out. Because I'm, you can, I, I think for the most part, you can probably, I mean, with some effort, you can find the PS5 in stores now, I think. Yeah, it's not that. It's just a money issue for me personally. Oh, I thought it was like an availability issue. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a money issue. But if, if I can get one, if I can buy one, I would love to talk about Hogwarts Legacy because I think it's actually coming out on next gen first. If not, maybe yeah. we'll talk about it later. Um, so if that doesn't happen, then the next game launch review that we have scheduled is actually Resident Evil 4 Remake. So I'm Ooh. actually yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, and again, contingent on me getting a next-gen console, I'd love to do the new Star Wars uh, Jedi Survivor because I'm a huge yes. fan of Fallen Order. Fallen Order March, was so March is stacked. March is stacked for games. It yeah. really is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you once again for being on, Andrew. And, uh, Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you to our listeners for uh, listening. If you enjoyed this episode, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or feedback on your platform of choice. You can find Collateral Gaming wherever you get your podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google. If there's somewhere where we're not, let us know so we can be on there. We also do have a Patreon where we have exclusive uh, Let's Play video game commentaries. And uh, we should be getting back into recording some of those soon because I have the equipment to do it again, or at least my co-host from Collateral Cinema, Bo, does. <laughs> yeah, my capture card broke, so that kind of threw a wrench in those that for a little while. But we got a capture well, card. If you, if, if you stream through PC, you don't have to worry about a capture card for the most part. Yeah, that would be great if I had a gaming PC, but I don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually recording. I, I record on a Mac. And I edit on a Mac, and I and I love my Mac, but you know it's just not it's not uh, it's not a gaming machine. I mean, it has the specs for it; it just doesn't have the software availability for it. And my right. Mac, in particular, is actually pretty old. So even if I like yeah. wanted to dual boot on it, you know, it wouldn't be up to spec now because it's a 2013 computer. But hey, it works. So, <laughs> <laughs> but all right, 
that being said, I've been Ashley Chancellor. And I've been Andrew. This has been Collateral Gaming. We are out. Bye. Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.